Hello, 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 and welcome to another. Uh, uh, can't speak. Another episode of Insight and Analysis. Now, I have a couple of quick things to touch on, real quick. And one of them is this is episode two, and I finally got a series name done. So, yay, Insight and Analysis. Now, I chose that because I am going to be presiding providing some insight on builds and some analysis of builds. So uh, pretty straightforward there. It's, it's uh... Anyways, let's go ahead and get into it because I, I don't really have much more to say than that. Um, so start off, we are going to look at an SV and I am going to be pulling up the notes and just going to be looking at this while we look at it uh, or yes this is the x3 nyla nyloticus um probably butchering the name here and i'm also probably gonna butcher the artist's name uh Lumbracy is the author's name and this one is a heavy fighter two turret auto miniguns uh four missiles four cannons uh, excuse me, for railguns, and shield 4,000, uh, resource costs, I am just going to look at the, the P menu for that, because I'm not going to be reading that off, because that would just waste a little bit of extra time, so, uh, iron, titanium, resources right there, now, please ignore this, these stats here, this is made for vanilla, and I will go over that in a little bit, this is made for vanilla and is, quite frankly, would work in Reforge, but just not very well. Now, according to the thruster layout on this, this would be pretty maneuverable, considering, yeah, pretty smart thruster layout, a uh, lot of redundancies, and the cockpit is very well done here. going to go ahead and get out of the cockpit right there so a couple of things that caught my eye on this build is the fact that it is very simple um, or not very simple but uh, a very small compact build and the use of contrasting colors also caught my eye as well as well quite frankly it looks like a uh, Star Wars ship but uh, I'm not really sure if that was the intention, um, but it, it does look like a, uh, a Star Wars ship to me. Now, on the internals, it is pretty smartly done on the internals, I have to say. Uh, use of some RCSs there, you have the generators on the inside. Um, that worries me, having the generators right next to the core, but I don't know if that was the author's intent, because it's not in the notes, and I have a feeling that it might have actually been the author's intent. Um, it is a little bit of a flying bomb, but uh, there's a lot of armor on the front, so it should be fine. As long as you back out when these devices start going, because if you don't, well, yeah, stuff can go wrong pretty, pretty quickly. And I, I would use its agility to stay out of the most incoming fire, um, yeah, pretty cool, neat little ship, definitely caught my eye, I would recommend you give it a little test spin, because this thing looks very, very capable. Wide, uh, wide array of weapons, which is always good. Alright, next one we have a very niche build. Now, this one is the... Let me pull up my notes here. The X, uh, the 12 uh, X11 PRC. Now this is a this is a uh, progenitor ring. Well, actually, I'm just gonna read the description because this says it better than than I can goof off and say. Okay, the progenitor ring collector PRC is a small SV to fly into progenitor rings and collect loot. 
Um, just wanted to sit in a small airtight SV and not care care about heat or cold or radiation and not have to walk around those giant rings. Also saves the reparking of your CV. Just fly into all three open rings and be done. Can be used as well to collect clusters of obelisks and other progenitor structures quite fast. Core 1, Wi-Fi, 922 cargo, oxygen station, and a detector. Very, very simple. Um, smart build to go in that little one-by-one um, open block area on the rings and the and the, the obelisks. Very, very few niche builds to do that. Uh, and to be honest, this is something that I am going to keep in my library for just that task because, well, collecting progenitor parts in the decay gate and the decay space in RE is more of a burden than it needs to be. Yes, I'm looking at you, Vermilion and Raving. Um, it is time consuming, tedious, and anyone that goes through the trouble of making a little ship to make it just a little bit easier, I salute you. Uh, anyways, next we have something uh, very, very cool the RE Morningstar by Rakuna. Um, now, before I get into this, uh, before I end, get into this, I want to let you know something. I saw this on the workshop a couple of days ago, and I was disappointed at just how few views this thing got. Uh, because it is very well advertised. Taking the time to add, do the advertising, I love that. And it's a very creative little thing. So uh, stop gushing over it and get to the, the notes. Akiva, eh, it's fine. Anyways, again, this is made by by Raccoon. Uh, you may know him from YouTube. He's the uh, the raccoon YouTuber, the YouTuber with the raccoon sidekick. Pretty fun to watch. This is not a sponsored. This is not sponsored. Just to be clear, <laughs> the Morning Star is a T2 starter SV that can be upgraded with more manual fire weapons and a shield generator. Along with the Pentaxa tank, it starts with four Gatling guns and has ammunition controller uh, for 4750 volume, uh, 4750 volume. Very fast and maneuverable. When upgraded, this can when upgraded, this ship can be a good SV t until middle game, uh, until mid game. It is made to go with the rest of the ships for my Reforged Eden Atlantis series. Let me know what you think. Uh, Rakuna, if you're watching this, this thing looks pretty freaking cool. And uh, I, I look forward to, uh, let's just say, being the bane of some Zyrax with it when I get a chance. <laughs> uh, very, very spiky, very, very pointy, uh, very compact, which I really like. I am a little bit curious how you're supposed to get into this on planet, but um, I'm sure jetpack boost and a low G plant planet uh, should be fine. Uh, it's got some RCSs on the wings. You have a couple of other things that I'd like to note about this thing is he's got the gats out here so that the Wait, hold on a second. Let me check something before I blow my mouth off. Um, where are the generators on this? Why well, you got me curious? And no, I haven't looked at this beforehand. Uh. Huh. Okay. Never mind. Uh, never mind. Uh, never mind. Uh. Do, 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 do. I don't know where the generators are. Hmm, okay. Anyways, a uh, couple of cool things I see here is the use of these pipes to merge the wing sections here. Uh, the reason that intrigues me is because 
a lot of people will put them on square blocks and then it just looks less great, uh, less professional than, than this. Uh, wow, my my uh, Engl uh, my use of the English language is, uh, is really showing through here today. My college level education on uh, it is really showing through here, isn't it? Anyways, very, very simple build. Uh, I can see why he kind of capped it at mid-game because it's um, it's a little bit too compact and it doesn't have enough armor for the cockpit to survive any major hits. So that's why it's mid-game from what I can see. I do like how he has these Gatlings out on these pylons because when the, the guns get targeted by enemy by enemy fire they'll it'll go out to here and uh it's not going to damage the the main portion of the ship which is great anyways another great build from Rakuna. uh loving the 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 purple and the pink in this build and then the use of lights to contrast that pretty cool now on to the uh two larger entries in today's video this one is let me get my show notes again. This one is the CV Dao, DAO Mark IV CV template. Now, initially when I saw this, I was like, CV template? Does that mean it's a shell? No, no, no. It's 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 not that. And I'll, I'll go ahead and read the notes here since they're short. The CV, the Dao Mark IV is a ready-made class 5 cv template and by class 5 i i believe that he means um you know what I'll, I'll save that for after i read this class 5 cv template hull is mainly hardened steel one to three layers made for vanilla uh, it is also provides space for internal weapons and and place for weapons on the hull i also installed lag shot armor around the important items there is more room to increase the armor the interior is almost empty and offers plenty of space to design according to your taste the aisles are designed so that the cockpit and the cockpit sv and hv hanger can be reached quickly place for places for important items such as warp drive shield generator shield generator and shield and generator are prepared so uh, warp drive shields and generators are prepared from what i'm reading here this is it, it's not done in native english so i i i had to uh muddle my way through the description and if i it made it sound horrible it is what it is now I'm going to go into the internals and clear up some of the confusion that I have in my own brain real quick. Uh, yes. Okay, so this is the SV Bay. Isles go out here. Battle Bridge, I like that. Uh, this is Utility Quarter to the important bits uh room uh the critical systems room so you have warp drive marked out you have your shield marked out and you have your cv components spread out here in a non-chain reactive way you might have to edit them a little bit you have room for more generators it looks like just enough to get it going uh let's see go through here and you have more room for thruster upgrades very nice uh looks like he's got some internal areas here such as i don't know why i'm saying yeah it's ge old man it's it's a he um i should check that before i shot my mouth off but oh well i i, I don't have to uh yep anyway i'm not gonna dip myself a bigger hole there so one thing i really like about this build is the fact that he's got some decoys in here uh built in to take damage so he's got his generators here so that the generators in the back don't get damaged um one thing that's i'm a little dubious about is having the lag shot internally if you're watching this ge um lag shot has been fixed 
and this is actually not the most useful lag shot type of lag shot it's actually the most size class intensive lag shot but you can get away with um, different types of lag shots as long as you just place it like that but I don't think you need lag shot in fact I know you don't need lag shot anymore because they fix what the problem was uh, I have confirmation on that and I have tested that and verified it myself uh, you still need to build things for chain reaction resistance, but uh, yeah, you're, you're good. So the thrusters here are meant to be upgraded from what I'm looking at here. They've got space to be upgraded, which is great. Uh, they are on the internals, so if you're running a server that has... Um, that has the rule that you can't have... That has the, like, server rule that turrets th or thrusters shouldn't be blocked um that's not a server setting it anymore it's it's a rule some server owners do that um it, it's it's a rule some server owners do that say um don't bury don't bury your main thrusters uh, uh i don't know why i'm going on that tangent anyways i really like the the use of shapes here and contrasting colors and then the way he blends the, the colors from red to red uh, I mean excuse me red to yellow is really cool on the back just to add a little bit of visual greebling now I haven't looked at the entire ship and uh, oh right that reminds me I do like to mention that the ship is not a rat run um, for the most part I'm just going to say for the most part, it, it's still a little bit of a rat run because I, I'm having trouble going around it. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a rat run, but it's not much of one. See, I, I was expecting to go to like the forward bridge or something, but I realized there isn't a forward bridge there. So those are spaces for manual fire weapons in there. And I don't see an external bridge, so it looks like only a battle bridge. This entryway is very cool. I like that. Uh, very good shaping around the hangar bay. I, I do like the use of... Yeah, that that's pretty cool. And then you have another entry here, apparently. Uh, ground, so that you can get up on the ground, maybe? I don't know. Uh, yes, very, very cool build. It definitely caught my eye. As always, for, for, the, for the with creators, there's always room for improvement. And GE, if you want to, uh, if you want some uh, tips for this, let me know in Discord uh, or contact me in Discord, and I'll I'll help you out with this. Uh, give you some tips, but I'm not gonna do that during this video. I, I'm not gonna go into like the nitty gritty like critiquing the build it, it, because I I I go on for like hours, and I'm not really sure how much feedback. Like, like I don't want to make a, a, a butt of myself being like, oh, this should be better done this way. Um, because I don't know how much feedback, what level of feedback you want. So I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. I am very impressed with this build. And there is a lot of things in this build that I really like to see, such as this. How you scaled it up by using these textures and this shaping. I like that. I really do. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Uh, this one is made by Ensipor. This is the UCH uh, Odysseus. Uh, Od Odysseus? Is it Odysseus or is it Odysseus? Odysseus. Uh, my my Greek mythology and pronunciations. Uh, I, I need to brush up, okay? Yeah, yeah, don't give me too much. Don't give me too much for that. Okay. <laughs> I need a brush up. Now, this is something that caught my eye immediately when I saw it on there. This is, again, a vanilla combat build. There's a lot of that going on right now because, well, yeah. Anyways, I'm sure you can figure it out. Now, this one is... I've looked at this a couple of times before I've done this video, and the best way I can describe this is this was made in the UCH style but as a player build that was heavily focused on RP, but with a little bit of conversion 
and a little bit of creative license could be added to an o as an OPVM game by somebody that wanted to take the time to do so. So this ship is, uh, let me look at the notes here because I, I'd rather have him say it than, I, than me say it. For far too long, the hostile factions within the Andromeda Galaxy preyed upon the Terrans. Despite all attempts at diplomacy, the UCH has remained the target of malicious intent. That ends now. The UCH expedition has been for exploration and discovery. The ships so far only armed with light defenses. But the time has come for a proper defense. Uh... The time has come for the roaming pirates, bloodthirsty warlords, the Creel, the Legacy, and even the Xyrax Empire to think twice before po pointing their guns at the UCH. Enter the Odysseus. A new evolution of combat ship added to the UCH fleet. The Odysseus brings top-of-the-line technology to the fight, allowing for a sustained engagement with almost no risk to critical components. Bristling with weapons and protected by seemingly unending frontal armor the odysseus still boasts impressive maneuverability all while providing live on board accommodations for a full crew no area is too dangerous even the most frighteningly hostile sectors are now within reach outside of combat the odysseus features mining and salvage equipment as well as constructors for production the hangar can also hold a number of smaller vessels even up to a heavy assault even up to heavy assault, a heavy assault hover tank. Uh, service corridors and repair shafts allow for easy maintenance and access to the ship's devices, including its suite of forward decoy devices, a full kitchen, mess hall, and a med bay provide the necessary functions for survival with while lounge areas, crew quarters, and forward observatory provide nice places to relax between missions. The wraparound living area, bleh, living area allow features. Living area also features executive suites and lo and lounges for important functions. And on to the features: CPU tier four, size class seven, one hundred percent CPU. Efficiency, PvP class armor, decoys, and layout, 8x rocket turrets, 8x plasma turrets, 2x flak turrets, 2x laser turrets, 2x artillery turrets, 6x, 6x minigun turrets, 4 cannon turrets, and 8 sentries. Sentry guns. 4 rocket launchers, 6 pulse lasers, 1 drill turret, 1 multi tool turret, 4 340. 20k KSU ammo containers and two 140 no 2x 14 KSU ammo boxes 6x 16 KSU cargo boxes organized in labels for specific purposes purposes including repair medical etc 2x 224k Harvest controllers, 22 maintenance cargo boxes to be relabeled as needed, full medical suite, full kitchen, four bridges, four fridges, four food processors, protected combat bridge with teleporter, medical chamber, and sentries to defend even the case of a hold breach, T2 shield, offline protection, organized and labeled devices, turrets, and containers for ease of use built for vanilla and official configurations so this is something that is made for official servers and official settings so this is the uh the official server but not the invader versus defender server the invader versus defender server has smaller size class limits which means that this one was is not able to go in and as said in the the briefing there on the workshop description it is max turrets so it's uh it's turret limit compliant cpu compliant uh weight mass volume compliant all that good stuff so a couple of the things that i am really impressed by by this ship is the shaping here around one of this little turret here it's a 
it's a retractable turret but it, when it comes out it's it comes out like this and this one is for dealing with ground from what I can tell you have landing gear I'll allow it to land and I'm going to go ahead and go in and land the ship um okay I'll, I'll come back to that uh, so I'm gonna go into the hangar and if I remember right it's a little bit of a rat run Where is the bridge? Okay, I'm gonna have to clip through this because this is too much of a rat run to do, be doing in a video. Um, that's that's one of my only complaints about this ship is that it is a rat run. Um, there is no quick access to the bridge whatsoever. Uh, oh, there's one. Uh, that's not necessarily quick access, but it's good enough. Okay. So go ahead and land that on the pad. Now, is this turret limit compliant? Because this looks like too many turrets. I don't know. Vanilla configuration, so it must be turret limit compliant. Anyways, back to the view on the ship. I, I'll ask questions later. So this one has a lot of, as you can see here, RP. And it even has these access corridors to devices such as thrusters. You have your, uh, again, another access to a, you have your generator there. And another access corridor here. And you have your, your decoy there. Um, where does that go? Am I missing something? Oh, that's a thruster at the end of the hall. Okay. Yeah, so you do have access. Uh, as you can see, my temp the temperatures are fluctuating like crazy. And there's a lot of RP here. Same on that side. Okay. All, all the way up there. I'll check that in a minute. Crew cabins. Okay here great use of texturing I'm, I'm just gonna say it great use of texturing very impressive a lot of time spent on this if uh, yeah if I was to look at this continuously it would be uh, yeah well let's just say that I'd be here all day if I was to do a full complete tour of the ship and I'm not going to do a complete tour of the ship because well I don't have the time. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't really have the time, and there's too much to see in an art in a ship with RP. So I'm just gonna walk around and look around. I know I'm going to miss some things. I know. Um. All right. I'm gonna do a, a look at it via clipping because there is just so much here, and you can see this. He's used some lag shot here, which is awesome around the core around the uh, the core components which is the PvP stuff that I I think it was talking about um, we got a gravity generator there uh, yes. offline protection however what really impresses me is the use of shaping on the externals and the use of colors now this is something that I mean, just look at this. That that's freaking brilliant. A, a, a great use of shaping and glass and textures on top of the glass to make a, a look. It, it's great. Um, and then again down here too. And then you have the shaping up here that hides this turret, which is kind of a bunker turret, but eh, whatever. It depends on the server owner if that's going to be a problem. Um, again, another direct access to, to repair things from the outside. Taking the time to texture and add texture depth and detail here. Great job. You have your turrets up here, recessed a little bit, which is nice. 
And then you have some more turrets up here. Again, recessed a little bit because that actually is helpful in combat. Now, these remind me of uh, UCHN, uh, uh, Halo, Halo engines, a little bit of a mix of Halo stylings there. So I, I see the inspiration there, and I like it. I, I really do. All right. Anyways, the links to all of these items are going to be in the YouTube workshop notes. Now... Just taking a look at my notes here to make sure I didn't forget anything. Now, today's video was a little bit shorter. I had uh, a lot of the stuff with smaller ships and a lot of the builds were a little bit more simple. No, I'm not saying that. A lot of the builds uh, had a lot of work to be done on them. And I do like how GE old man here actually is contracting the player to do some work here and not assuming that the style is going to fit or if they want to add or if the player wants to add say more cargo space or they want to add more internal things in here or they want a certain style of hallway here whether it be just plain simple or whatever I do like that he gave the the person that subscribes to this a little bit of choice to build in survival and make it their own now i know that's not for everyone and i'm going back to a build i've already looked at but i wanted to make that clear here and anything like that that impresses me i'm going to comment on it okay um yeah I, I, I'm currently working on my own style here, and it, it's it, it's still very rough, and I apologize for that. And I am watching the comments, <laughs> and I am making imp improvements where I can. Now, please remember to make constructive. Uh, please remember to give constructive feedback. Use your brain. Um, remember to be kind. Because if you don't give constructive feedback, I may either simply ignore you or I may take the time to explain to you why I do things as I do them. There was a guy the other day that said, oh, you shouldn't be reading the workshop descriptions. I'm not going to lie here. That royally pissed me off. And I'm sorry, dude. But the reason that I, I look at these workshop descriptions and try and do my best reading them is because for the simple reason that there are youtubers out there that that believe that they don't need to read they don't need to take the time to actually look at the build and then they can unjustly criticize it because they don't read now that's a knee-jerk reaction for me right now and so let me tell you a re let me read you the the response that i had to them the actual response Reading the workshop description will not change. If a creator takes the time out of takes the time to write out additional info that the user may find helpful, then it's the least I can do to acknowledge their effort in doing so. Many video creators refuse to read descriptions of workshop items. There. That's the end of a sentence. They review them and then miss key items in the build or worse unjustly criticize the build because they are too lazy to read. I've seen people do that and it irks me to no end. So instead of griping about me reading the work reading the workshop descriptions oh, excuse me, and so instead of me griping about people not reading the workshop descriptions, I decided to do it myself and put my mouth where my money is and try and do better so I, I'm, I'm sorry that's not going to change because that is a core facet of why I chose to do this and how I chose to do this now if a workshop description contains a huge chunk of lore I can see where people would click off a lot 
like like i i can see that but the person took the time to create a huge chunk of lore for this and i saw this on the workshop the other day and one of the re the items i decided not to review now this person i'm not kidding here put a huge chunk of time into creating lore for a dropship now while that wasn't the only reason that i didn't review the ship it was part of it i i'm gonna be honest here and, and i'll explain this this person had put a lot of time into re in creating lore and yes there was device description and a description about the build in it but at the time i wasn't sure how to implement that into the video to do recording in a meaningful way so i'm currently looking into doing that like do i copy a picture of the lore and or do i copy a picture uh, do i just simply take a screenshot of the workshop items description where they put in lore and then just put plop it in screen half-assed no now i thought about that and i was like no that's not going to do the author a a justice and and then yeah i mean if i'm going to ask the viewer of the video to read the lore that i'm actually reviewing the ship on i'm going to take the time to take it into my photo editing into my affinity application and i'm going to copy and paste the text make sure that it's done in a neat way and make sure it fits the screen and make sure that that lore is in the video and that it's in there in a way that fits the style of the video it adds something to the the lore itself and so i will add like a background for it and everything and and i will i will convert it to a text that is a text font that is engaging to the viewer anyways this is a long rant because somebody criticized me for reading a workshop description but you guys if you're still listening to this need to know why i do the, why i do things the way i do them and it, it comes down to certain youtube creators refusing to read a workshop description and then unjustly criticizing because they didn't understand what they were looking at that was explained in detail in the workshop description. Now, I'm not going to name names here, but you guys know who you are. And when I see that, it irks me, as I've already said. So I am trying to do better. I'm not perfect. I am not even a great human being. But, heck, I don't even claim to be a human being. But that, that, that's another whole whole, whole whole thing there. Anyways, that, that is, it's a whole goofy thing there. But the point is, I'm trying to increase the quality of these videos where I can. And as some of you know, I only do, like, I do it all in one take. So I don't do video editing. <laughs> now, there's going to come a time where I have to do video editing, but then... Uh, uh, eventually anyways thank you for watching if you listen through this rant please consider subscribing it means that you actually care about this content so take the time go down hit that thumbs up hit that bell icon uh look at the links in the description consider joining the discord the discord i will i love interacting with the discord and helping people out with builds like if you have questions i i will i will either answer them right in there or i will I will look around to see if I can get the information for you, or I will go get someone, <laughs> or I will literally take the time to ask someone who I know has the information to get you the information that you need. Okay. Um, anyways, it, it's, it's something that I'm working on to build. Now, if you're really interesting and would love to be a lovely human being, consider subscribing to my Patreon. The GEI Shai Ling is out now. Um, stats are on the screen right now. I'm not going to go through that because I've already rambled on just a long time. And that's all handled through the Discord. There, there's a link in the description. There's a, there's a Patreon link in the description. And, uh, and then you just, you get the EBP from the Discord when you join the Discord because it's, it's handled through, it's handled through Discord. Um, subscribe on Patreon. The bot on Discord will give you a role, and then you get access to the channel with the EBP. You can download it, and there are a lot of other perks. 
um, excuse me, a lot of extra merch that you can get access to. There's even some free merch, um, backgrounds that I have made of the game. And if if you're a certain level on Patreon, I believe it's uh, if you're a T2 or a T3 patron, you can actually request me to make you a custom background for for the game. I mean, for your computer, for your tablet, or your phone, and I'll do that for you. But uh, anyways, thank you. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Remember, be the change that you want to see. In other words, be the change you want to see. It's as simple as that. Banshee out.